Hey everybody, this is Tim. It's January 14, 2018. I uh, want to show you a few things uh, about wireframe rendering in 2015 compared to 2018. I have this storage unit that has some wire mesh caging around some metal framing and I just want to show you what it's like in 2015 uh, let me just grab it and throw it in here uh, there's a setting in the surface editor right here render outlines and this is on a per surface setting and I've set it up so that these polygons right here render as wireframes and kind of like a uh, you know a, a screen or a fence or something like that. It's very handy, and uh, you can see that you know it is 100%. Uh, got volume to it you see right through it it's just as if it were geometry so it's really nice and it's on a per surface setting it has nothing to do with object properties and edges nothing to do with any of that business so I'm going to turn this off and let's go to 2018 and we'll drop a 2018 model in here same model I just set it up with a quick node that uh, I saw that Andrew Combe did on Facebook uh, the problem with that is it wants to affect the whole unit and in order to make it work you have to go to the object properties and set it up right here to start get your to get your uh, your wireframes let's put in a negative value here that'll give it some volume and then hit this button here we'll make it the color so it's very similar to what we had in 2015 however you notice it affects seeing how we're in a object properties every single thing and you can see that you know we have them down here and everywhere uh, in order to get this to do this it's all set up inside a node and that's a very simple node but again I would have never figured this out on my own so thanks to everybody on Facebook for sh showing the way this is it right here so but whatever anyway what I want to show you other than that that it'd be nice to have something that worked on a per surface basis instead of on the whole object well, like you have to do here it would make it much more handy I the only thing that I, we could do here was in modeler make make this a separate object in another layer and that'll work but just you know with so much easier in 2015 to just have it you know part of the surface right here very nice very simple uh, one of the other things I want to show you while I'm here is the general overall performance of VPR uh, you know again this is 2015 
I don't have radiosity turned on or anything. This is just a one distant light. And you'll see that and my hardware's terrible. It's it's old. It's eight year old hardware. You can see that it refi refines uh, fairly quickly. Uh, let me jump over to the very first version of 2018, 2018.0, and it's it's not too bad. It you know it's fairly decent. You know I guess I'll take it. Uh, radiosity is turned off on here as you can tell it's very dark on the behind where the distant light isn't working so so it's very you know it's, it's workable uh, let's go into the very new version that just came out and let's drop that same piece in here and this is a same setup as 2018.0 but this is 2018.01 let's fire up VPR and let's turn on these edges just like before put in our negative value minus 0 0.002 and this thing is extremely slow uh, it's so slow that it is just not even usable look at look at the big pixels and I know my hardware is old but you know, it looks like we went backwards from 2018.0 to, to 2018.0 0.1 okay yeah, so let's just for comparison go back to 2018.0 and fire the same thing up and look at the difference it's unbelievably different very usable uh, very controllable Again, let's go back to the newer version. Whoops, the newer version. And it's super, super duper slow. Back to the old version. Extremely usable. Okay. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It's what you would expect. Same exact object, same exact scene setup, nothing different. The only difference is the new version is super duper slow anyway that's what I have to show see you next time